Hey, yo. Yo. Hey. It's the best of vibes. It's the best of vibes. G'day, guys. Welcome back to the Best of Vibes podcast. Uh, this time it's big episode number 10, and we're joined by none other than Lachlan Grubb from the Central Districts. How are you, Lachlan? Good, mate. Nice to be on. Yep. It's nice to have you on. Um, I guess first things first, like we like to ask everyone is like, tell us a bit about yourself growing up and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I got a pretty good family. So I've got mum and dad, um, and I've got a couple of brothers as well, Jake and Liam. So Jake's 16, he's at um, Central's as well. And Liam's uh, just turned 14. So he's in all the development programs at the moment. Um, but yeah, we grew up in um, small little um, suburb in Greenwith, um, played local footy at Titri Gully. Um, dad played agro footy out there as well. So Nice uh, family orientated club and then uh, made the shift out to Centrals when I was under 13s and yeah, been there ever since and which is great. Yeah, now you've played two games for seniors. Am I getting that right or does the Sandful need to update their website? Uh, just the two. Yeah, how was that like debuting for them and playing in the seniors side? Yeah, it was killer. Um, so yeah, I played um, reserves last year. I think I played like six or seven games. So I already had that, um, like, you know, senior experience with bigger bodies and stuff. I don't find it that hard, actually. Um, I suppose the way I play with my speed and stuff, just run away for everyone. But, um, yeah, playing the two senior games is awesome. Um, I came off an injury at the start of the year, so I um, did a Cindy's Moses injury. So I missed the first four rounds, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, but, yeah, played the first two um, reserves games and then um, got selected to play a league. Um, but that was awesome. All the club was um, really supportive and all the boys got around me. So, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Who was your favourite teammate to play alongside in those games, like for the seniors? Um, well, there was a y- another young kid, Corey Durden. Um, obviously, been pretty close with him. I went to school with him as well at um, my other school. Um, we've grown up, done all the um, footy together. So to play alongside him in the league was pretty cool. Um, and then there's some other boys like Cole Presbury, um, Ollie Shaw, Drew O'Brien, all younger boys. Uh, they've been really good. So um, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um. I've done, I've done my classic here. I had another question to follow up with that, but I've lost it. Um, you said you got injured. What's been, has that been your worst injury or have you had any? Um, probably probably not my worst injury. I've, I've had a few little niggles like here and there like over my career so far. Um, but when I, in 2017, because I'm a sprinter as well, um, I did a, had like a navicular hotspot, so it wasn't a proper fracture. So that's in my, uh, that was in my left foot. Um, so I had that, that probably stuck around for about six, seven months, but that was in the off season. So I was doing sprinting at the time yep. and that was just caused through like just overloading at trainings. Cause you used to like train on the rubber track, which like was really heavy on my feet. Yep. Um, yeah. So that's what caused that. Um, but then it came good by the time um, for footy season because I was running in grass and then just had to wear the classic footy boots at the race two and stuff. And um, there's no dramas from there on, but um, yeah, that's probably been the worst one so far, just like length wise, but um, yeah, I've had like ankle stumps, all that. Um, I broke my arm when I was like 15, um, doing no hands on the scooter, fell off. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, other than that, it's probably the worst one. Ankle was fine though, it's only four weeks, so yeah. Yep. Um, like you said, you're a sprinter. You obviously do, ath- I'm assuming athletics other than footy. Yeah. Um, is there any other sports you do other than athletics and footy? Um, no, I try. Well, I've got two, two younger brothers. We are, we are always bloody out playing, um, different, different sort of sports, like tennis, um, like golf, basketball. Um, not that I'm any good at them, but, um, yeah, I like to get out and play other sports, but, um, yeah, for me growing up, it was just mainly footy and then, um, yeah, I did sprinting as well, which is helpful. Who got you into footy or was it just more something that you wanted to do? So, um, I guess it just ran in the family. Dad was playing footy at the time. Um, yes, he, like I said, he was playing A's out at Titri Gully. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, I had a lot of mates that I went to school with that played footy too. So, yeah, it was just sort of something I was born into, I guess. Yeah. Um, obviously, the draft's coming up and you're one of the prospects. But um, don't mind my dogs, by the way. You'll probably hear them barking in the background. Um, if you were, like, say, Australia came to you for the Olympics and said, we want you to try out, would you rather be playing for an AFL side or go and represent Australia in athletics or something like that? um yeah that's definitely that's definitely something i have like thought about like when growing up um like as as sprinters there's not a lot of money involved with it from athletics australia like i've looked into all that stuff not that the sport is just for the money like i'll do it like, for the passion of it um but yeah i have thought about that but if um yeah that's what i've always said if footy doesn't work out i'm definitely going to give it a crack and won't stop until i do get into the afl system but um if it doesn't doesn't happen for some reason i'd definitely like to you know, go down that sprinting path and see if I can represent my country um, in the 
sprinting. So yeah, I've always thought about it, but um, yeah, footy is probably the main one at the moment for me. Yeah, nice. Um, who got? I asked who got you into footy. Who got you into sprinting and athletics? Yeah, so um, my dad's uncle David Grubb, he won the Bay Show Field, which is um, the rich sprinting race down in here in SA. So they do that at Glenelg, um, around early January every year, late December. Um, so he won that back in 1970. So I think he was one of the fastest. He was the fastest man in Australia at one point. Um, so I guess it's always been in the blood. Dad did the athletics as well. Um, so I started in about under 10s at Golden Grove with Athletics Club. Just around the corner, did a bit of that. Um, little brothers did that as well. Um, but then that, that sort of pro- progressed. Saw that I was getting like, good results. Went to like state championships and everything. Um, and then I had some other injuries, like, like growing um, problems. So I had like heel problems and knee problems. Um, so I had about a year off athletics with that and then um, wanted to get back into it again. So the, David Grubb, my dad's uncle who run the Bay, um, he got us onto a coat um, who I've been with since I was 13. I'm still training with him today. So I've been with him for about five years um, and then got back into it through, through him. And I've been doing pro running as well. Um, I've headed up to Victoria, um, done the store gift as well, ran in that when I was 15. Yeah. Um, so really good experience, do all of that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, that's how the sprinting sort of started for me. Do you do cross country running or is it just straight sprinting? Stuff that. <laughs> I hate that shit. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't mind it. Not that bad at it, but um, yeah, I just hate, hate running long distance. To the, yeah, no, um, I in primary school, I'll never do it again. Yeah, I know. It's a shit. During your off season, what do you like to do? Or like during the corona break when obviously you weren't as, weren't as badly affected as we were with it, but. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we had the um, we stayed like well, for four or five weeks of preseason. Um, then all the COVID stuff happened. Um, so we were just told to have a couple of weeks off, which I did. I was pretty happy about after all the hard stuff we'd done. But um, yeah, I had a couple of weeks off. Um, obviously, wasn't allowed to do anything, so just waited. Um, just played golf really. Um, did obviously with my brothers. Um, cause we couldn't really see mate. We were still in lockdown. Um, so it's good that I still had the two brothers to you know lean back on and do shit with. Um, so yeah, after that, we got a, um, program from our, um, strength and conditioning bloke. Yep. Um, so he did all that with the, the, um, AFL Academy. Um, so we got that, we were doing press sessions about three times a week. And I think by that stage, we were allowed to get together with a couple of mates. Um, so yep. I was doing that with many Liddy and Cooper Murley. Um, so they were in the hub as well with me. Um, so I did that with them at the local footy club down at Tipton Gully. Um, was doing that and then I got a, couple weight sessions in a week as well which is good um so i guess i was still saying i top, top of all my training um but yeah that's what i was sort of doing in my like downtime um and all the covid stuff happened so yeah yeah is there any athlete um like all over the world that you sort of look up to in a way like their mentality sort of thing like how kobe had the marble mentality and stuff like that yeah definitely kobe is definitely one of them just with the marble mentality like you mentioned um, the way he, the way he went about his sport and what he did um, just created a massive legacy. So yeah, he's probably one of the major ones for me. Um, and then when I was growing up, Usain Bolt with the sprinting, um, just an absolute beast with what he does with everything. And then you've got all the different AFL players. Um, so yeah, probably Usain Bolt and Kobe, one of the main two for me. So yeah. Is there any AFL player that you'd look up to and like aspire to be like? Yeah, definitely Dustin Martin from what he. Obviously went through, I'm sure most people know the story with him, dropped out of school, um, had family problems, everything. I guess he just stuck to the process, um, just did everything he could to get into the system. And now look at him, he's just striving, um, just trying to be the best he can be. So definitely he's one of my role models in the um, AFL. Would he be, if you had to pick one player to play alongside, either at Centrals or if you get picked up by an AFL club, that club, would he be the one player that you'd want to play alongside or...? Um, yeah, definitely. Like, obviously, he's the one that most kids would say. You got people like Paddy Cripps, um, Dangerfield. Um, I'd actually like to play alongside some other like players who play in my position, like Dan Butler. You got Tom Papley. Yep. All of those sort of smaller guys. So to play alongside of those guys would be yeah, awesome. It'd be sick. Yeah. Um, who do you support? No, I don't support anyone actually. Oh really? Ask this a lot. No, I don't support anyone. Like growing up, we used to support like crows and stuff. Um, but dad goes for the pies. He had a mate that got drafted there when he was about 18. Um, but yeah, sort, sort of the pies. Got a bit of a soft spot for them. Good. But Good. Um, yeah, you go for the pies? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, mad pies supporter. Lovely. <laughs> love to hate them at the moment, but. Player. Um, I'd have to say Chris Main, I reckon. Chris Main? Yeah. 
I'm going to pendle. Go pendle pause. Yeah. I think I'd say, I'd only say main just because he puts his body on the line no matter what. And he's a hard nut, isn't he? Yeah. I'd use, uh, like last year or the year before, I'd say James Ash. So I'm never one to go for like one of the big names like Degoe or Elliot. Yeah, I love watching Jeremy Howe play. Yeah. He's fucking sick to watch. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah, I think that's a lot of like younger kids' favourite players just because he's basically yeah. like a human highlight reel sort of thing. What's your best or funniest story that you can tell us? Well, you can tell me because Jack's not. What are you related or? It can be or it doesn't have to be. It can be whatever you want it to be. Oh, footy related. Not really not really funny for me, I guess, but people watching. Um, I think it was this year in the twos, um, gets Glenelg. There was like some bloke like running towards me and I wasn't sure if I should like go closer to try and smother or and at this time I was about like five, seven meters away from him. And he kept coming close. I was like, Oh, what do I do to like stop? Do I smother it? So anyway, I just stood there. And by the time he's kicked it, his belt, he's like kicked it that hard. It's hit my face and I've gone down. I'm nearly out cold and the ball's like gone off my head like 30 metres away. I'm just laying there. I've just got stars going around my head. But um, yeah, it was pretty pretty funny. People watching, not, not more so me. I had a headache for the game. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was probably the funniest. Yeah. Would that be your most embarrassing story or is there another one that would be you? Um, yeah, it's probably the most embarrassing story, pretty related. Um, when I was younger, I um, grew up at the river on our bikes and I um, had like, um, do you know the, like, like the speed signs? We've got 50 kilometres, 60 kilometres. There was one of those up at the river and it was low into the ground. I was riding my bike and I've come off and I've like split my face open on the side of it. I've uh-huh. got called Scarface for a couple of years. Um, so, yeah, that wasn't very good. Um, yeah, embarrassing stories for me, but um, funny for other people. Yeah. yeah. Would you consider would you consider yourself a bit of a joke star or are you more a um calorie? yeah I'm, yeah I'm pretty pretty laid back pretty, pretty laid back like, like um with everything I do in the footy field like get serious but off the field at trainings and like I'm the one that likes to make like like make people laugh um get around the boys um but yeah a bit of a joke stuff when it comes to that do you have a go to joke no whenever I get asked this so I don't have a go to joke it's just like on the spot when I'm out with the boys training just make jokes but um. No, I don't have any like jokes that I just go to. Not really that sort of joker. Yeah. <laughs> um, you were saying like off the field, you like to make people laugh. But what's your pre-game routine? Um, pre-game routine. Um, I've got some got some bonds jocks that I wear before every game. So I wear those every single game. Um, sort of a superstition. Um, I shave my legs every Friday night for a game as well. Yep. Um, and then other than that, just like stay stay calm, chill out before the game, um, get taped. Um, I like to go out in the oval and have a leg, kick a few goals, go through my routine. Um, but yeah, other than that, just pretty simple and then go out and play, do my thing. Yeah. Do you have a pre-game pump-up song? Or is it like the one you sent me the other day? Okay, that's a new one, actually. We'll have a look here on my phone. I don't know. I'm not really a music guy like before games. Um, yeah. But um, life is good, great, like that one. Um, before games, listen to that a few times. But no, I'm not really a music guy before games. Just like to chill out, really. Yep. Um, is there any like weird, like you said, you wear the Bonds jocks uh, for every game? Is there any other weird superstitions that you have? Um, no. Nah. Uh, not other than that, probably no, nah, nothing really. I don't know the main, main, main two of those ones. So. Yeah. Yep. Um, is there any of your mates like um pretty sure it was Taj that suggested you come on here? Yeah. Um <laughs> that you'd like to see like in the AFL or climb the ranks sort of thing. Um anyone. Um you can I, say- can, I, I guess I guess I got a I guess I got a few. Um obviously the people I grew up with, like Corey, um been training with him for a very long time. Um, to see the work that we both put in, uh, it'd, be, it'd be good to see like guys like that get into the system. Um, but yeah, not 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 like any boys in particular. They've got all the hub boys that I've like yeah. come really close with. Um, don't get to see them as much anymore. But um, yeah, guys like Taj, uh, you got Manny Liddy, Cooper Murley. Um, so it's Cooper's draft year next year. Um, to see yeah. him get drafted would be awesome. So yeah, he was he was an underager in the hub this year. So he's worked bloody hard. Um, yep. to get where he is. Um, he's a gun, so I'm tipping he'll go top ten next year. Um, but yeah, to see him get to the system would be awesome. So he's another gully boy as well. So he's from Teacher Gully. 
Um, yeah. So you can get in the system would be, yeah, would be sick. Um, I'll move on and ask you the Instagram questions. You only you only got two, but they're from Anything? our former guests that we've had on. Right. So we've got Bailey Chamberlain. Oh, all right, you're gonna tell me who? Yeah. Yeah. He said, "Can you give me a quick? We'll paint a pound." Oh, <laughs> oh bloody hell! Um, yeah. So when we went when we went away to the, the first hub trip. Um, yeah, we went to a place called Wolpina Pound. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just started saying Wolpina Pound in like an Indian accent. I'll give you one reading. She's like, Wolpina Pound. <laughs> um, but no, nah, I just kept saying that, making all the boys laugh um, on the trip. But um, yeah, that's a while ago now. Um, yeah. Right, it's a classic. Um, Zachy Phillips asked, oh, is it true that you call yourself Usain Bolt? uh no mate. i've never i've never called myself usain bolt but um yeah that's something something he can talk about what's the story beyond that or is there any or is that just him just i being... don't know I, th I think bill just likes stirring the pot a bit that's just that's just his sort of character but um yeah I've, i don't think i've recall calling myself usain bolt <laughs> yeah um you're obviously in year 12 this year yeah how's that been for you like with obviously covid made you guys learn from home as well yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been good. Um, so I went to Tyndale Christian School from year six to 11. Um, I moved for school in year 12. So I went to Golden Grove this year um, just to change to a public school. I um, just wanted to get away from a few dickheads, really. Uh, my old school, just getting into all the wrong shit. Um, just knew they were fake friends. Um, so I moved over to Golden Grove. Um, had heaps of mates. And when I played up um, junior footy at Mobbury and Tipsy Gully as well, um, my missus goes there too, so that was sort of an easy thing. Um, but yeah, I had a really chill year this year to try to get all my work done, head down, bum up. Um, but yeah, I had really good grades. Um, I was actually in that psychology exam that got cancelled. Oh, yeah. um, so I um, did, a, did a couple of weeks revision and then um, got that cancelled. But I was pretty chuffed because um, we get our like, pretty good grade. Yeah. We did during the year and I had an A for that. So oh, hopefully nice. that goes down for an A. So I was pretty happy with that. But um, yeah, other than that, year 12, yeah, liked it. It wasn't too hard. Um, just tried to balance my time well with footy and stuff because obviously we had the hub, um, sand full trainings as well. Um, so yeah, it got pretty hectic some stages and stressful. But um, if you stay on top of it, um, it's no dramas. So yeah. Yeah. So we're lucky down here. Me and Zach, um, we go to a school. You've probably heard of it, Cedar. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Is that yeah. the sport one? Yeah. Yep. Um, and we don't do exams at all. Oh, really? Yeah, right. We've got, we got a thing called VCAL. Oh, yeah. It's basically, like Zach says, it's people who can't be stuffed to get a job but also can't be stuffed to do VCE and go to school. <laughs> Lovely. You're, you're cheering then, aren't you? Yeah. But he didn't have to do exams this year. I won't have to do them next year. But in 2025, they're getting rid of VCAL, so I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, right. So do you still like do all the normal subjects with no exams? Or Yeah, so we don't even choose our subjects. So oh, really, let's give it to you. Yeah, we do a vet course as well. You probably don't know what that is, but... Yeah, uh, what sort of vet course? We do a couple here in SA, like Cert 3 Fitness and all that. Yeah, we, we do Cert 3 Sport and Recreation. Yeah, okay, yep. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. They just give us vet and VCAL and just give us what we need to do and that's pretty much it. We don't choose yep. what we want to yeah, do. Yeah, yep. Yep. Um, do you have any pets... Yes, I do. Um, got one at the moment. It's a blue staffy. Um, his name's Jet. Uh, I think he's about 11 or 12. So he's getting towards the end of his career now. Um, but, um, yeah, I've had him since I was probably a yeah, young one. Um, I did have one before. Her name is Kayla. She was a red staffy. She she, she um, battled till she was about 17. Uh -huh. so she went she, she went a fair way. Um, she died from a tumour on her nose. But, um, yeah, at the moment, just the one pet, Jet, blue staffy. Good little boy. I've got three little pugs. Oh, really? Yeah. Those things barking in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, we used to have one, and it was like your, uh, your old one. Battled to it till he was 16, so. Yeah, right. He did well. Yeah, no, Staffy's good. Yeah. So Pugs are just annoying. Are they all the same age, or? Um, two of them are, and then one of them's, I think, 13. Right. Older. So he, yep. He's still going well. Um... If you had a book or a movie made about your life, what would you call it and why? Yo, put me on the spot here. <laughs> um, what would I call it? 
Mm. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I have to come back to that one. I'm not sure what I would call my own book or what it would bloody be about. I guess it'd be about my life story. Um, yeah, I don't know what what would be in my life story. I'm not sure yet. Still pretty young, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what to come back to that one. Yeah. Um, what's your go-to pub feed then? Uh, chicken parmy. Yeah. Chicken parmy. Um, yeah. Can't go wrong with that one. I don't know if you saw on Taj's one, but I don't actually like them. Oh, really? Yeah, can't. can't do, you like, do you like chicken schnitzel or? I like schnitzel, but it's just. Can't like, eat a parmy. Ah. You say parmy or parma? Oh, either one. Sometimes I say parma. Sometimes I say parmy. I say parma. <laughs> but, um, Yeah. Yeah, right. I don't like parmies. Yeah, I said like I said to Taj, I'm probably the first one you'll first person you'll ever meet that doesn't like parmy. Parma. Yeah. Whatever you it's not want very to say. Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get around everything else that's Aussie. It's just I can't eat that. Yeah. No, it's each their own. Yeah. Um, heading into the draft, are you like pretty chilled about it? Like just laid back, waiting for the waiting for the night, or are you just one and truly like shit yourself? Um, yeah, a bit of both. Um, I guess I'm just pretty chill about it. I guess just going to wait till the night and see what happens, see if my name gets read out. Um, if it doesn't, um, I'm not going to be really um, bothered because I know I've put in so much hard work this year. But um, yeah, I've um, stayed under 16s. I was only chosen for that. Um, I was in like the squad of 50 where they did like the metro and um, country. Um, I, I wasn't really good back then. Um, but um, I'm under 17s here. So last year, I guess you call it a breakout year. Um, so I've never really been in all the state stuff, didn't make the state 16s, did the state 17s. I played okay. Um, I guess, yeah, like I said, call out my breakout year. Um, and then this, they got to play reserves footy as well last year, then started off in the twos again, played some league footy with the seniors. Um, thought I had a pretty good year this year. But um, most of the feedback's just been that um, 12 months, like 12 months, like too young. So I've still got a bit more developing to go. Yeah. Um, still a um, December birth. Um, so I turned 18 on December the 7th. Um, so I guess I've got that on my side. Um, but yeah, I've spoken with a few clubs. There's been a bit of interest through my manager and stuff. But yeah, um, yeah if it doesn't happen, I'll, I'll prepare for, for it to not happen this year. Um, yeah. But if it does, bloody hell, it would be a bonus. Um, it would just be awesome to get into the system. I think I'd just thrive once I'd be in there. Um, yeah. But yeah, if it doesn't happen, I'll just go back at um, Central. We've got a really good coaching staff and group there now. We've got Paul Thomas. So he's had experience AFL level with all the people he knows as well. We've got Nick, Nick Russell coming from Hawthorne. People like John Platten. Um, but yeah, I've got a really good group at Centrals and um, can't wait to get stuck in the footy either way if I do get drafted or at the dogs. So yeah. Yeah. Is there any AFL level team? You're probably sick of hearing about the draft and stuff like that because that's probably all that people talk about. Yeah. Talk about to you. Um, but is there any AFL side that you feel like you'd fit into their system the best? Um, yeah, probably um, Richmond's probably the main one. Just like the camaraderie they have um, amongst the team. And I guess that's why they play such good footy because um, they all just love each other, really. Um, that's yeah. what we all play footy for, to um, have the mate sort of thing. And if, you, if you're playing good footy, it's obviously good stuff happening off the field. So, um, yeah, Richmond just looks like a really good club to be at. And um, the sort of player I am with my like, running power and speed, um, and then my pressure as well off the back of that. Um, I think I'd probably fit in really well with that sort of style of game, with the speed they play at, with players like Danny Rioli, um, you've got Jason Castagna, Shia Bolton, um, all of those sort of boys. Um, so, yeah, to learn off those boys as well would just be sick. So, yeah, probably the Tigers. Yeah. Now, obviously, they're based in Melbourne. Like, you don't have to be that stupid to realise that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, Would you rather, like, stay at home in South Australia and play footy, or would you be happy to go into state? Um, yeah, I've thought about, I've thought about the four, I've got the family and stuff, but, um, yeah, I wouldn't really be too phased. Like stay in Adelaide, obviously be sick. So we've got yeah. family and everyone home. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't really care as long as I'd off to go pursue my dream of playing AFL, wouldn't really care where I'd go, to be honest. Um, if I landed an AFL club, I guess it wouldn't really matter as long as I can get stuck in and, um, yeah, just getting to the system would be awesome. But yeah, stay at home would be a bonus, but, um, yeah, I wouldn't really mind where I'd go, to be honest. Yeah. If you had to, like you said, you'd, like to play for Richmond because you'd feel like you'd fit in there. But um, if you had to pick any state to go and play other than home, South Australia, where would you choose? Uh, probably up on the Gold Coast. Yeah. Um, good lifestyle up there. 
Um, yeah, probably a Gold Coast, go play Gold Coast or Brisbane. Um, I've been up there a couple of times. I was supposed to go there last week, actually, my missus, just to get away for a few few days. But then um, we had the COVID outbreak here. That bloke lied from the bloody pizza shop, stopped me from going away. <laughs> Um, so they co- they literally closed the borders the day before we were supposed to go. Yeah, um, I, that. I felt bad for you when I heard that. For shit. Um, but yeah, hopefully I get to go again soon. But um, yeah, probably the Gold Coast, just a sick, sick lifestyle and environment up there and to play footy up there and train in that weather every day would just be so cool. So yeah, yeah probably the GC. Is there um, any AFL level coach that like you feel like you'd excel under or you'd like to be playing under their coaching style? Um, coaches are there. Um, yeah, I think Stewie Dew from um, Gold Coast, like I mentioned before, he's um the Centrals yeah. boy. So he grew up in Adelaide, um, played all, most of his footy out at Centrals. I think he won a couple of flags. So I guess just to have that um, that sort of like relationship with him from being from the same footy club would be pretty cool. Um, I think I'd probably excel under him. Um, just have some respect for him for what he's done at our footy club as well at the Dogs um, and their translate into the AFL level. But, um, yeah, probably the Gold Coast and playing other Stuart Dew would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'll ask you a question that Zach usually asks. You're obviously not 18 yet, but um, if you have a car, what car do you drive? Uh, I've got a Triton, the 2014 Triton. Uh, chuck some black muddies on that, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. My car. I couldn't have a conversation with you about that. I've got no idea about cars. Yeah, dad. Yeah, dad. Dad loves his cars. He's got a Tirana as well. He's got a Nav. Um, yeah, he loves his cars. So, yeah, it's good. I'm just saving up to get myself a Ford Raptor. That's all I'm waiting for. They're pretty cool, aren't they? Yeah. If I was to, if I was to get like a like a dream car, I want a um, want a Jeep Wrangler, new one, pretty pretty basic. Yeah. Chuck some muddies on that. Chuck a leaf get on it. Yeah, if we're talking dream cars, I'd be saying um, it's a Koenigsegg Aguera R. It's the fastest roadworthy car in the world. I've never bloody heard of that in my life, that car. <laughs> but there's no chance I'll be getting that. No, I could. Keep trying. Well, if I'm saving up for the next 50 years, I might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, it by the, get it by the time you're, what, 65, 70? There you go. Me deathbed. <laughs> um... Zach could probably ask you this question too, but how long have you and your girlfriend been together for? Um, I've, I've known her for a while, like since I was in year eight. I've been friends and stuff, but um, been together for about a year and year and a couple of months now. Oh, yeah, nice. So, been for a while now. Yep. Um, what other people would you suggest to come on here? Um, you should get some of the younger guys on, like I said Merley before, or you could get like people like. Manny Liddy, Sturt Boy, uh, Tom Power, Bolter this year. Um, yeah, those three boys probably. I'd yeah, definitely recommend getting them on. Um, yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, you're obviously fairly close with Taj for him to recommend you coming on. But are you close with, like, Caleb and that? Or is, are you just sort of mates with Taj mainly? I didn't, I didn't really know, like, any of those boys, like, at the start of this year, like, end of last year. Um, so, we all got chosen in the hub together and we went away on a couple trips for, like, a week. Um, so, I think I was I was in a couple of those boys. I think I was in Zach Phillips' room um, in the dorm and we went to um, Wilpina Pound and all that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, got really close with most of the Eagles boys. We're just a good, good bunch of lads. Um, me and Taj get on really well. We don't see as much as probably we'd like to. But, um, yeah, get on with all those boys well. Um, good to see them again a couple of weeks ago when we played in that, um, uh, what was it called, that all-star game. Yeah. Um, good to see those boys again. But, um, yeah, all the boys in the hub, they're just a good bunch of blokes. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's been your favourite footy moment? You obviously favorite sent me a few moment. your highlights, but... <laughs> like last one. Um, favourite footy highlight? Um, yeah, definitely playing league footy, um, getting selected to do that. Um, especially at a pretty young age. I think it was, um, yeah, early 17 when I did that. Um, so to do that at a young age and have that experience on my build already, um, that was pretty cool. Um, and then playing at Adelaide Oval in all the finals we did. I played in the prelim um, a few months back. Um, we, we went down with about four or five goals to be able to play on grounds like that. Um, and, yeah, that was pretty cool. Probably those two are my favourite footy memories so far. Um, like, yep. I didn't really I didn't really win any, I didn't win any grand finals like as a young one. Yeah. Uh, I think I played in three in a row against the same team. We got flogged every year. 
Um, but um, yeah, probably those two are my favourite memories. Yeah. Um, I'll ask you a tough question here. If your name gets read out on draft night, who will be the first person you call? First person I call? If doesn't call you. Yeah, well, I guess I'll be watching it with mum and, mum and dad family. Probably have a girlfriend come over. Yeah. Um, first person I'd call probably be um, my sprinting coach, Brendan Golden. Um, he's, I've been close with him for like, yeah, five, six years now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's done so much for me over my my short career so far with sprinting. He's like helped so much with my footy and I respect him so much. So yeah, probably he'd probably be the first person I'd call. Yeah. Was there anyone that obviously you said you had a breakout year last year? Um, was there anyone that sort of gave you a little nudge to sort of say, like, work your ass off sort of thing? Yeah, definitely. So um, being chosen in the 17 Futures is pretty cool. So we get exposed to like all the all the state coaches and everything. We have like development meetings, like work out what we're good at, what we're not good at. Um, so yeah, just definitely probably Tony Bentford, the um, state 18s coach, has been a massive help of mine um, just with honing in on my um, strengths and weaknesses. At the start of the year, I was more so like, as, as a small forward, you've got to have the pressure and stuff, like just got to go like, all the time. So using my speed, in defence was a main one for me because I was more of a um, attacking player than a defensive player at the start of the year. So I wanted to get my pressure game up. So he was definitely one for me that really, I guess, gave me a kick up my ass and um, told me to start working on those things was really good. Um, but yeah, players at um, players at um, local footy as well, they're really good. Um, and then coaches like Johnny Platten, um, big believers in me, um, just telling me to use my, use my weapon more. And just taking the game on, I guess, because um, as a young one, probably like two, three years ago, I never really, I've always been quick, but I've never really used it much. Um, but yeah, just really taking advantage of that and using it as much as I can um, this year and last year has been really good. So, yeah. Um, if you had to name one for each of what I'm about to ask you, what would be your biggest strength and then your biggest weakness? Yeah, so biggest strength would be my speed, obviously. Um, sprinting helps heaps with that. Um, our biggest weakness. Um, probably a contested marquee and stuff. I yep. guess it, I guess you do need that. Everyone needs that. Uh, yeah, probably could to work on my contested marquee and be yeah, probably a weakness of mine so far. Yep. Um, you said like the coaches really gave you a kick up the ass sort of thing, and um, like you'd call your sprinting coach. Who would be the one person that you'd want to thank, like after if you got drafted? Um, yeah, mum, mum and dad, they've been like massive supporters of mine, like for everything they do for me. Um, definitely thankful them for them if I was to get drafted. Um, but, um, yeah, still definitely my sprinting coach. Definitely thank him for everything he's done. Like he's like, I think you not like done so much work for me yep. over the past five, five, six years. Um, so yeah, probably him. Um, and then, yeah, just like grandparents, Nan and Pop, um, all those sort of guys have been really help, really like, massive help with like coming up the games and stuff and supporting me. So, um, yeah, probably those, that sort of group of people. Yeah. Um, I'll ask you a simple one. Would you come back on this show? You obviously have only got me today. but Yeah, bloody hell. Be back here in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> and would you, would you link up in person if you got drafted somewhere in Melbourne or something like that? Definitely. Um, I was thinking about that last time. Even WA, I've done it with the footy yarn boys as well. Yeah. Um, so I did that a couple of months back. So, yeah, I was thinking about that. If I was to come over, yeah, it'd be sick to catch up. Yeah, we might. We should get something with the footy yarn boys because we've spoken to them. We'll... Yeah, yeah. He messaged me today, actually. He asked if I could um, do something on Sunday with him on their live, but um, yeah. can't because I'm going away on a mini um, schoolies trip. That all got cancelled. So, doing that this weekend. Yeah, they said they're good blokes. I've only spoken to them once, but they seem like good kids. That'd be good. Yeah. They might go, we go to the left to South Australia, they go to the right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <That's real. laughs> if you had to choose one other sport other than like athletics and footy to possibly have a professional career in, what would that be? Um, definitely NBA or golf. Yep. Um, like, but those, like the people that play in the NBA, like LeBron James, like there's like such good athletes. I don't know like how they're so good. Like, they're bloody like seven foot, like yeah, bulk has and like jump like heap high. Um, but yeah, to play in the NBA would be pretty sick. Um, but obviously they earn like so much money, like to be that good and um like earn that much money would just be so good. Um, and yeah. then yeah, being pretty good at golf would be pretty cool as well. So yeah, probably those two.
Is there any specific NBA team you support or is it just sort of sit back and watch it? No, I don't really like support any teams. Like I don't even I don't even know how many teams there are actually. Um yeah, I just like watching it sometimes and actually or anyone. I don't have the time to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, me and Zach are fairly big fans of the NBA, so Yeah. Yeah. So who do you go for? Uh, I go for Atlanta. Yeah. Who does he go for? Uh I'm pretty sure. Oh no, the seventy sixes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ben yeah, Simmons, he he's plays with him, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Knew that. <laughs> um, done it again. Ah, <laughs> uh, Jesus. Um, I've oh, I've got notes on my phone. You got a joke for me? Oh, you've, you've probably heard it if you've watched any of our other ones. It's the same one every time. I think uh, I forgot what you said to Taj, but yeah. A bloke yeah. walks into a bar with a steering wheel down his pants? Oh, yeah, I've heard this one. I don't remember the answer though. Yeah. No, what? Because, mate, you realise you've got a steering wheel down your pants. The guy goes, yeah, I know, it's driving me nuts. Yes, yes, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, my, that's my go-to. I've used it too much though. <laughs> I need to stop. Oh, well. It's like an addiction to that <laughs> So bad. <laughs> um... When you first got your an email, text, call, I don't know, everyone gets it different, but from uh, AFL club who wanted to interview you, were you pretty chilled out or were you shitting yourself? Um, no, I wasn't, I wasn't that chilled out like usually I am, but I was, I was shitting myself. I was like, pretty nervous about it because um, I'm obviously new to it all. Um, but, yeah, when I got my um, first year, you get an email. So they, they email your um, footy clubs, they email centrals. Yep. Um, and then our development manager or wherever that is um, sends it out to the dad and then dad just forwarded it to me. So I was at school, dad called me, um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I don't obviously get the recognition of the, some good footy I've been playing and get a club to come and speak to you. So we do it over here. It's pretty similar to this. Um, so you do it with like a recruiting manager and head of football. Um, I think some clubs have, I think Carlton have their like senior coach um, basically going on that. Um, yep. But yeah, it's, it's pretty nerve wracking. Um, but once yeah, you get used to it, so yeah. Yeah. I won't ask you who you spoke to because I know you're probably not allowed to say that or how many clubs you've spoken to, but um, <clears throat> any club that you felt was like really keen on you as opposed to other ones? Um, clubs that are really keen. Um, I haven't really spoken to many, but um, yeah, probably the main one's Richmond, um, I guess, because I I'll, I'll like fit in with their running, like the running power um, and everything they do in their side. But yeah, probably... I've had like a few through my manager, um, but yeah, like I said, I'm most of the clubs, um, most of the feedback is that I'm 12 months late. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm um, draft night. See what, see what, see what's happening. Yeah. Now you had a mullet. I uh, don't know if you've got it anymore. No, I shaved it off. It's all gone. Yeah, I've done the same. <laughs> Why do you shave yours off? Was it just time or? Oh yeah, I, th- I think I, I think I was one of the first people to like get the mullet haircut probably like two, three years back. Um, yeah, I had like the, I had like the V where it come down the back that got pretty long and then I grew it out. You could like see it from like behind here at the sides. I got it pretty long at one point. My brother's got a pretty nice one at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I cut it off probably oh, six months ago now, five, four, five months ago now. Um, but yeah, just gone the short back and sides now. I was actually thinking I'm skinhead, just shave it all off. I did that, okay. did that probably three, four years ago. It was a bloody retard, but, um, might go back. Yeah. I had a I had a filthy one. Zach yeah. had a, Zach had a more filthy one than me, but I'll try and find a photo and I'll show you. Um, yeah, right. Hayden from the Footy Yarn. He's as bloody luscious as, and it's like curly. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if you can see that, but that was mine. Bloody hell! Yeah, that's sick. It's like yeah, a full full ni- full ninety degree angle. Yeah, and <laughs> I'll try and find Zach's because Zach's was more filthy than mine. Oh sure not. Hey, he still have his. Um, he just cut it shorter, like really short. Right. But no, nah. he should have got rid of it. I, I got rid of mine. We did ours for charity. All oh, right. Yeah. So, for a good cause. I don't know if you heard of them, the Black Dog Institute. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of that one. Yeah. They did a mullet for mental health thing. Yeah. So through you the whole month of September, we grew it out. Yeah. Sick. So we did that. We raised about a thousand bucks. Something oh, like really? That. Yeah. Sick. We thought it was going all right, and then the Black Dog Institute posted who raised the most money, and it was like one group raised like a hundred thousand. We're like, holy shit! 
and that's just two mates and we're like jesus what? no chance we're getting here that one the one that he sent he got josh morris to rate his mullet oh really what, what did he give it uh he gave his a 10 and he gave mine a nine felt pretty 10 what the hell you shout yeah he had a pretty nice one in his draft gear josh yeah he like, he like washed it heaps so it just like used to flow it was like an old school one yeah i've seen it he had a pretty nice one and then he cut it off i think he's growing it back isn't he I don't know. We're I'm not sure. We haven't spoken to him since he came on, so um, I don't know if you can really see that. Oh yeah, see that size. That's pretty long. Yeah, he yeah, had a lot see. for me, but I still... isn't he? Isn't he a country boy? Yeah, he lives um Dales Creek. I don't know if you've heard of it. Ah, oh, never heard of that. Near Ballarat. Oh, okay, near there. So it's yep. been an hour or two away from me. Yeah, probably. And you, and you go to the same school. Um, yes, yeah. I was there every day, an hour or two away. Um, I yeah, he'd probably be an hour away from school, yeah, right. But sometimes he catches a train, yeah, well, he doesn't have to anymore. He only really drove there for a week, but <laughs> yeah, he picks up his girlfriend on the way and probably that's cute, gets my kids. <laughs> um, no, I, I do the same thing, <laughs> can't say I do. <laughs> the title of your life we you said no, i don't know you're lost um, i'm not sure <laughs> um audio um i don't know something with grub in it <laughs> um yeah i'm not sure story the story of grub um i don't know it's pretty basic but um it's all i can really come up the top of my head um would you would you have one for me uh geez i don't know <laughs> yeah, it's a hard one um yeah we've had everyone that's come on is pretty much like caleb polt i just said the life of caleb yeah life of grub yeah, yeah pretty basic that's but that'll, that'll do target story or something like that so wasn't his scoey's life or something no i made it that <laughs> you have to come uh, up with one for me then yeah i forgot what hagen said hagen said something different yeah oh, i haven't watched his yet I just made his right place, right time, just to play on words. <laughs> Is there anything you'd say to like people who are, I guess, down at the moment or like sad to like sort of help them keep positive? Um, footy related or just everything with really a shitty virus? Yeah, um, shit, basically. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess just um, stick to the process. It's just one thing I've always gone by with my yeah. sprinting coach and um, everyone around me. Just yes, yeah, stick to the process. Um, keep doing everything you're doing. Um, just don't keep your head up, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's the main one for me. Just stick to the process, do everything right, and everything will fall into its place. Come whenever that will be. But um, yeah, just stick to the process. I reckon it's just the main one I go by. Yeah. And is there any like motivational saying that you sort of live by? Or um, I guess hard hard work beats talent when talent doesn't yeah. work. Is that right? Something along the lines of that. Yeah. Yeah, I've always really prided myself on that. Just really working hard. If talent obviously doesn't work, you, if you if you've got talent to go with it, it's obviously a bonus. But um, yeah, just working hard will put you one step ahead of others all the time. So, very one for me. Yeah, I think mine's just stock standard like this podcast, just good vibes only, and then PMA, which positive mental attitude. Yeah, lovely. Just something very simple. Good sharp. Do you like? Is it? I'll just ask for sack ass. I'm not going to complicate it. What's your go-to footy boot? Um, Nike Tiempo. Yeah. Um, I've been wearing those for a couple of years now. But um, through my management company that I'm with, they um, Puma's the main sponsor of that. Um, yeah. And one of my one of my dad's mates who I grew up with at school actually works at Puma. He's like one of the main blokes up there. So I'm um, maybe looking to wear Pumas this year. They've got the, the Puma Futures. Yeah. Um, they're pretty comfy. So, yeah, I'm still deciding what I'll wear for next season, but um, at the moment, it's a nice tempo. Yeah. You, I've, got like, I've got like seven pairs of them. I'm actually, I'm actually bad. Um, do you prefer to like train how you play or do you like just chuck runners on and your shorts? And... Um, I've usually trained my pink ones. Um, pink or white ones, but um, at the back half of the year, I got a new pair. That I did all the finals in. They were yellow, and then I had a blue pair as well. But um, yeah, just whatever I'm feeling on the day, I guess. Just 
grab them out and wear them. But um, yeah, there's usually probably like two or three pairs of blisters. I get I blisters like heaps easy. I love my feet, so um, yeah, usually like two or three that I'll stick to. Yeah. Um, what does your recovery look like? Like if you're uh, a big game. Yeah, recovery. So at um Central, we've got an ice bath. Um, and we've got a like a heated like little spa as well. But um, with COVID and that, we weren't allowed to use it at all, which yep. was shit. Um, but yeah, we've got a big shower block, so I'll have a shower and then I'll just jump in the ice bath like two minutes in there and then do that probably like four times. But we'll do it in a rotation, like in shower groups. Um, and then when I get home, we've got like a wheelie bin as well, double fill it up with ice, chuck some water in that. Like I'll do that after trainings, like on usually like a Wednesday night after our main session, we'll do that. Um, but yep. then, yeah, just stretching as well. Um, so I do, I still do about one session a week with my um, sprinting coach, which like, in, does, it's not always running that I do with him. Yeah. I do like beach sessions as well. Um, like really getting strong for the legs to do weight sessions with him as well, a bit of stretching um, yep. and just mainly focusing on keeping my hips, hips, core and back just like really, really like flexible because um, that just prevents like soft tissue injuries like down the lower legs. So um, yeah, I do a lot of stretching as well. So yeah. Is there any uh, go-to gym workout that you have? Um, go-to gym workout. I don't mind the battle ropes, actually. That's, that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, but um, trap bar deadlift, just standard, do that all the time. Can't go wrong with that one. Yep. Training training tonight, actually, down in the city. Oh, yeah? What time's that? Uh, it's at 5.15, I think. So I'll leave here at about 10 to, 10 to 5. All right, then. Oh, I should probably let you go then. You should probably get ready. Takes me a couple of minutes to get ready. <laughs> um, geez. Is there any hobbies that you have, like, on the side away from sport? Um, I've, ha- I've never really been, like, a big video gamer. Um, my little brothers do that heaps. They're all now probably screaming on it with their mates all the time. Um, but, no, nah, I've never really been into that sort of stuff. Um, but, yeah, mainly just play golf. Um, that's yep. my main hobby. So I've got a couple of mates to do that with. Pre play golf like once a week. Um, don't mind basketball as well. Not that I'm any good at it, but um, yeah, I like to those two a crack all the time. Yeah. Um, is there any Netflix shows you can recommend me to watch? Um, God, I've watched that many like over the lockdown and stuff. We've had. Um, I started watching American Horror Story at the moment. That's not that's not on Netflix anymore though. I've had to watch that on Fox still. Um, but um. On Netflix, um, Riverdale's not bad. Yep. Finish that. Um, Prison Break, that's actually really good. You should watch that. Have you watched that before? Nah. Yeah, that, that's that's a sick show. Watch that. Pretty cool. Yeah, I just finished watching, um, I don't know if you've heard of it, Atypical. What's that? I can't hear you. Atypical. Atypical, yeah, I watched a bit of that. Is that, a, is that a movie or a series? Series. Yeah, I remember what I watched that a couple months back. I don't think I finished it, though. That's that kid who's got like autism or something, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen, seen a bit of that one. Yeah, and then I, I also finished watching, um, oh, The Inbetweeners. Yeah, it's funny. I've watched that about like four or five times. I need, I need to, to bring, they need to bring out more. Yeah, I need to watch the movie. Yeah, I've watched that. It's funny. It's, it's probably the best one. I think they took that off Netflix. They used to have it on and I searched it the other night and it wasn't there. In the movie, they come over to Australia. Yeah. As... A lot of people say it's shit, though. Like, the movie's pretty crap. I rate it. Anything in between is good. <laughs> I've got it set out then. So I've got Prison Break and then I, I got asked yesterday to watch Fat, the Fat Pizza movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've watched a bit of that. Yeah. That's funny. funny. Yeah, I have to watch that. Yeah. Well, then, well, I'll let you go. Get ready for training. No no worries. Thanks for having Thanks. me. No worries. Thanks for coming on and uh, good luck with the draft. And we'll talk to you afterwards. Yeah, too easy. No worries. It's the best of vibes, we gon' blow your mind It's the best of vibes, go to brand new heights